Working in a level one trauma center as an anesthesiologist definitely has its challenges, but it's also a really rewarding experience. And I'm going to show you how a day in my life goes as an anesthesiologist in a level one trauma center. Let's go. As you may know or may not know, I work at a level one trauma center and basically what that means is it's a center that has comprehensive care available for any patient in an emergent situation. Um, we have 24 hour in-house anesthesiology staff that includes attendings, two in-house attendings and two residents that are in-house. And then we also have surgeons that are in-house 24 hours as well as all of the other specialties that a trauma center requires, such as neurosurgeons, orthopedic trauma surgeons, uh, interventional radiologists as well. And level one trauma centers are generally academic centers and produce publications each year. So, I just got a page for Pediatric Trauma Level 2, age 15. So, I'm going to go down to the ER and see what that's about. The level 2 is uh, basically the level of severity of the trauma. So, it depends on whether or not it's a penetrating trauma and the mechanism of injury. Friday at a level one trauma center can be very busy. Lots of pages back to back, usually after rush hour. And uh, definitely, especially because it's summertime. According to the American College of Surgeons, a level one trauma center has at least 1,200 patients yearly or maintains a surgically directed critical care service, including 24 hour pre and post anesthesia services and an operating room that's available within 15 minutes of notification. Radiology services, ICU team coverage, 24-hour lab services, adequate blood bank supply, and requires many medical subspecialties to be available and in-house 24 hours a day. That includes trauma orthopedics, cardiothoracic surgery capabilities with cardiopulmonary bypass, capabilities. It's usually in a teaching hospital that trains residents and includes a trauma research program with a minimum of 20 peer-reviewed articles in specified journals or 10 peer-reviewed articles published in specified journals. So even though I don't take many trauma calls right now. When I first started working as an anesthesiologist full-time, I did. And I was able to experience a lot of um, different aspects of that and provide anesthesia to patients in their most critical times. The OR is always set up and ready to go in the case of an emergency. prepared is key, so you always have to think ahead and develop a plan or have a plan in mind that you would enact in the case of an emergency. So being prepared is number one. So whenever we have traumas, we usually have to make sure that we give the patient adequate IV access to give them the fluids, including blood transfusions that they might need in a rapid fashion. So a lot of times we'll place what we call large bore IVs, and those are really pretty big IV catheters that will help give um, access to giving fluid through the veins of a patient very fast. So this is one such IV. They're, for those who are squeamish, these IVs tend to be really big. And most of the time when we give the large, when we place large bore IVs, we have to do it very quickly in someone who's already bleeding or has lost a lot of fluid. So you have to develop a really good skill of finding the veins and being able to put, place the IVs inside them. So this is what we call a 14 gauge IV. 
huge, right? That's like a big, the biggest one that we can put in. And as you can see, there's a large hole. You can give a lot of fluid through this IV pretty quickly. Big needle. So unfortunately for the patient, this is often done when they're wide awake. And, um, you know, it's a life or death situation. So we want to make sure that we get access um, to giving them fluids that will, and medications that will save their life. Other times we will use um, a central line, which is a catheter that goes a little deeper into the body and it goes pretty much close to the heart as far as where the tip of it ends up. And that's where we're going to be giving the patient medicine and fluid that's going to help preserve them and support them. So um, we usually give stronger medications through central lines because they're a little bit more dangerous to give through other veins. So that's something that as an anesthesiologist, you're gonna learn how to do really well and really quickly in an emergency situation. Other things we, we use in traumas are arterial lines. So like this catheter. So this is something that we would place into a patient's wrist right about their artery where you feel your pulse. And that's gonna give us access to measuring the patient's blood pressure at every beat. So you can see what the blood pressure is at every beat of the heart and be able to manage any swings in the blood pressure. So if it drops really low or goes really high, we can give medications to stabilize them. And we can draw blood from that same site and get a good idea of what their blood counts are and give medications to support and also transfuse more products if they need it. And if they're actively bleeding, we continue to transfuse products and get the results from the lab just from drawing samples from that artery. So right where we would fill your pulse, that's a good place for us to place those kind of catheters. You can also place it anywhere else, except for the neck, <laughs> that you would fill your pulse. So in your the center of your arm, or even in your groin. So those are some access points that we use often in traumas, because those areas tend to be easier to get to, especially if someone is losing blood really fast. The other thing we do often in traumas is intubations. So these are some breathing tubes that we would often use to intubate a patient. In these settings, we use a lot of different devices to help secure the airway or make sure that the lungs are protected in someone who is having any active bleeding going on or if they've had any injuries, let's say to the head or the brain and have become unconscious. We would definitely place a breathing tube in those patients to help support them and to protect their lungs. So this is a level one rapid infuser, something that we use to give blood really quickly and we can actually give large amounts of fluid over a short period of time, like even a liter of fluid quickly. So this is another great tool that we use in trauma settings. This is a glide scope, which is one of our best friends when we're intubating someone quickly. And basically it's a camera-based system. So we use this camera to find and view the airway, vocal cords, and pass the tube through it. So this is really helpful in the setting of traumas, any bloody airways, or any like swollen mouths. So it really helps us to get the tube in intubation very safely. And then in our work, in our life, we usually place a lot of IV catheters, use a lot of different monitoring equipment, pumps and fluid. So anesthesiology can get very technical. Working at a level one trauma center can be quite the challenge. So if you're considering doing anesthesiology and um, you want to think about the places that to potentially work when you're done with your training, a level one trauma center would be great for you if you're up to um, the challenge of like a very high acuity patient index. So having patients that are really sick coming to you with urgent medical needs that you need to take care of, a level one trauma center would be great for you. I found that as um, anesthesiology training went along, I found myself very, very prepared for working in an acute environment. So all the things that you're gonna learn during your residency, all of the training and all of the techniques that you're going to um, become masters of will really come into play when you're working in those settings. So um, anesthesiology as a specialty is geared toward uh, managing patients that are critical and patients that are having changes in their status that um, are happening pretty rapidly throughout the surgery. So those skills translate really nicely and seamlessly into working in the setting of taking care of trauma patients and specifically level one traumas, um, which can be a lot more complex. So um, hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about what goes on in trauma centers and what we offer. 
um, from this video. Unfortunately, I'm not able to take you into the OR or the ER during um, a said trauma activation, but I would like for you guys to get like a little idea from this video of what an anesthesiologist does in this type of hospital and what you would be doing when you're able to practice anesthesia as well. Um, here we take care of um, patients of all ages and of all um, medical backgrounds. This is a center that actually gets referrals from many other community hospitals um, when patient situations become complicated. So we get to see all of the extremes of disease and we're able to treat pretty much any patient here. So um, my job, what I do when I get the page for a trauma call is I go down to the ER and see the patient. Um, and if the patient needs any intervention from an airway standpoint, in other words, if they need any type of intubation or support of their breathing, I will definitely step in and lend my expertise. If the ER physicians are having any difficulty otherwise, um, we are just basically working together to make sure the patient is stabilized and in the safest way. So anesthesiologists will be a key component in any type of acute emergency surgery. Anytime uh, people present to the hospital after having an accident, any type of injury that's acute, we will be the ones that are rushing to um, help stabilize the patient and uh, resuscitate them um, during the procedure. And so resuscitation in the operating room sense usually has to do with giving blood products, um, giving fluid, and giving medications that would support blood pressure and heart rate. So those are some of the things that we do on a daily basis. And pretty quickly. Um, we have to work rapidly, make quick judgment calls, quick decisions in emergency situations. So if that's your personality and something that you feel comfortable with doing, um, anesthesiology is going to offer you that opportunity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.